Today we're going to show you how to install a nice breaker into your electrical panel. If you're doing a remodeling project in your kitchen and you added a new microwave oven like we have here, we have to add this 20 amp circuit to the electrical panel and we're, we're probably going to install it right here. Okay, so this is what your breaker looks like and it basically has the switch on here. You want to make sure it's set in the off position before you start wiring and there's basically only two parts to the back of it. One part is the hook. You put the hook on first and this part is what snaps onto the power bus and we'll show you all about that. We're also going to show you all about safety that you need to pay attention to. Watch this video to the end and make sure you've seen everything you need to know. Otherwise, you're gonna get shocked. So this is really the only tool we need here is a flathead screwdriver. Everybody's gonna be different, but you're most likely on yours going to have a giant switch right up here. And that's your main cutoff. And you wanna flip that to off before you even do anything, before you even take off this cover. In this case, at this house, our main cutoff is outside. So we need to head outside and turn that off out there. And you must do that first. You cannot operate on this live. And that's how you do it. You just shut off the power. Now let's go test the panel inside. Okay, so we've cut off the power outside. Now we're going to remove just the cover panel. The safety here, okay, do not touch anything yet because we still need to test to make sure that there's no voltage in there. Always shut the door because you don't want the door flapping around on you. And then you just start unscrewing. Now I like to start at the bottom. That way the last two screws here will have it hanging and it's just easier to manipulate it. When you get to that last screw, you want to, with one hand, you want to hold this cover here. Okay, so let me give you the quick tour of your breaker box here and what you need to do about the safety. And remember, just because we turned off that switch doesn't mean that there's no voltage, especially in the case where if your switch was up here, because you would normally still have high voltage on these three wires up there, these three lugs. This is your power, your neutral, and your safety ground there. So what we do is you can come in with a non-contact tester like this here. Test it on an outlet first to make sure that this is known to be working. And then you just come in here and the places that I know, like this is your power bus, there's no power here. I'm really concerned about these three, so I'm gonna check there, see, not getting any indication of voltage whatsoever. Some of the real safety conscious electricians out there are gonna say, oh, that's not good enough. You need to use a voltmeter here. So that's what I have, I have my digital voltmeter and I will set this right here and I will just start measuring voltage across these terminals and, and make sure that I'm not seeing any. So sure enough, six different ways to Sunday, Check all these bars here. So now that we're satisfied that we're zero volts, we know we're safe, but this is a good rule of thumb that I live by that you should live by too, because I don't want to find out on the news that you got zapped or killed or something. So what you got to do here is I assume everything is live. That's what's kept me alive my entire life here. Assume that everything here is carrying electricity. And so don't touch it. There's no reason for me to touch with my hand any of these other things up here other than what I really need to get at here. That's an important safety tip for you. Okay, so as you look at your breaker panel, the only things you really need to know here are the power is in the middle. So you see this big copper plate, all of your little breakers plug onto this copper plate and that's how it gets the power. And then it takes the power from these wires and it goes off to the destination, like your outlet to the microwave oven, for example. Now see the big three power lines that come in here, your power lugs. So the main one here with the red on it is your power. So that's what feeds the power plate. Your second lug right here feeds all of the neutral. So you can see all of the white wires that come in for the various circuits just attach right there on the neutral. All of the copper wires that come in out of your Romex cabling, copper on this side, and there's more whites on this side to handle all of the breakers on this side. And there's another copper bus here. So we call these buses. So there's three buses, power bus there, neutral bus right there, and copper bus right there. So you can see it's very simple. There's really only three things you gotta worry about here. And they're very easy to deal with. When you're done with this, you're gonna be like, holy cow, I can't believe I was gonna spend a few hundred dollars to have an electrician come do this. This is your power wire is gonna go right into where this hole is and then you tighten down the screw. It's very simple. Other breakers, you might have these two little plates in there or one plate. You make sure the wire goes underneath the plate so that the screw pushes down against that plate and pinches against your wire. Just like feed it through that one there, just show it going in. Yeah, that's good. Now force it down there. 
So there's other considerations to figure out here. Like, where do I want to put my breaker? Do you want it there? Do you want it over here? We discovered it's okay to fill in this spot and we'll have to punch out the little plate for it on the front cover. And that's a good place to put it with all of the other lighting. Okay, so here's how we're going to attach the breaker. The breaker has a hook. So that hook is going to hook right up under this plastic tab right here where you're going to put the breaker in. That's where you're going to hook it first. So once you hook it in, you'll snap it into place on the bus bar. Okay, we're going to slide the breaker into place and make sure that hook is underneath it. See, like that? Now that the breaker is in place, you just, you just give it a little oomph and snap it into place there. So here we're just punching out that, that blank there. Here we go. There's our hole now. We'll run the wire through there. Okay, so now we have one of these Romex connectors here, and we're going to attach this to the top of the electrical panel there so we can run our Romex cable through there, and we're going to secure the cable through there. This is a strain relief. These are required by code. Now, I thought it would be a lot easier to just attach the connector onto the cable first before we feed it down in here, because getting back in there and getting all of those screws on there for that hole is going to be very difficult. And then it's coming in right there. See? You have to have at least a quarter of an inch of the sheathing coming in inside the clamp, inside the box. So we're going to probably cut it somewhere around here because we're not going to be able to get it at it very easily. You see all of these other pre-existing ones that the builder put in? We're going to make ours the same length and we're just going to make an incision right here in our outer cable very gently, vertical incision that will come down between the wires and we're then going to remove all of the Romex sheathing and be left with just our three wires, the black, the white, and the copper. Sometimes you get lucky and you don't even have to slice it the rest of the way. So you just pull all the wires out here. Here are the three wires that we just liberated here from the Romex sheathing. So now we just have to find out where we want to secure this copper wire first. This is our earth ground. So I found a home for the copper wire right here on the ground bus bar. There's actually a, an available slot here right at the top. So let's insert it there found this available slot right here for it. And so our ground wire is in. You just make sure you tighten down that bolt nice and snug. Okay, so we strip off about five eighths of an inch off of the end of your white wire. We found one right here. We're just gonna go right at the end of the line where the last one is and left off. And we're going to insert our white wire up here right after that last one. But you know what? This is too long. We're gonna to have to figure out how we wanna form it just like the other ones were and bring it right over to here and that will determine our length. Okay, so there's where you put it in right there. And you wanna put it so that the insulation is just almost up against there. You can see a little bit of wire, but you don't wanna see very much at all. Alright, so there we are all tightened in and there's our second wire, the white wire. Our neutral wire is now connected. All we have to do now is the black wire, our power wire. Okay, so here's where we put the black wire and it goes right in there. You can see how I cut the insulation here so that it doesn't leave any of the copper wire sticking out because you don't want anybody to be coming by with their fingers later on and inadvertently touch that and touch the wire or, or something gets snagged on it. Okay, so make that nice and snug and there you go. We're ready to insert our breaker. To install the breaker into the electrical panel, here's our hook. Remember we showed you before, the hook has to go behind that tab. So we're gonna put it all the way down in there and it's behind the tab. And then we just push it into place. Here we are. So we are now installed. Now we just need to check the wiring on this and make sure everything is routed properly and not sticking out of the way. So we just wanna make sure everything we do here is conforming to all the others. So. Make sure our black wire is here and then it, it's running straight up and it's tucked in with all of the others and it goes over to the cable right there. And then our white wire comes down and it's going right there. And our copper wire, of course, is coming down and you can barely see it, but that's it right back there. So he's in place. So all three of these are in place. This is a good time now to come in here and I always like to vacuum out the whole bottom of this. You get dust in here from dealing with the drywall. You're gonna have dust up here, see? So you want to get all of that cleaned off. Now we just have to remove this. 
Okay, so now that we've got it all powered back up again, don't touch anything because this is powered up now. I'm gonna go ahead and test this, just a sanity check. You can see how all of these turn on here. They're turning on our non-contact tester. So you see how this one's not giving us anything? That's because the breaker is off. Remember I told you to set the breaker to off before you installed it. Now we're going to turn it on. And you see how it turned on the non-contact tester. So it's telling us there's voltage there now. Okay, turn it on. There you go. Perfect. All right, so now to attach the panel, the best strategy for you, and sometimes it's, it's better if you have two guys also doing it, but your idea is if you can just get one of the screws on the top to let it hang. So that's what we're going to do now. And then the other one here. Oh, let me try this. So now once you have it hanging, it's just so much easier now to go in and insert the other screws. Now I'm sort of OCD about this, but when I put the screws in, I always like to make them all the same, where the slots are pointing vertical. Just kind of a neatness thing. I do the same thing with my outlets and switch plates as well. Okay, one other thing we got to do here is, you see how you have these empty slots here? This is a big safety issue. So you got to make sure you have all of these face plates here to put on there. And they're very easy to put in. You just install it like that, and it snaps into place. You come over to this one here, install him in there. There you go. So now with the face plates installed here, we're perfectly safe. Nobody's ever going to stick their finger in there and get shot. Close that there. So you see how easy peasy that was, folks? And you were going to spend all of this money on the electrician. Holy cow. Hey, and if we saved you any money today and you want to show your gratitude, there's that little super thanks. It's that little heart with a dollar sign down below. Hey, you can leave us a tip anytime you want. So thanks for joining us today, folks. We hope you enjoyed this one, and we'll see you on the next one.